Hi, this is Kim and Nelson at Plant Pure Nation. And we're cooking dinner tonight and inviting you into our kitchen. And we wanted to share with you how easy this can be. Um, we just got back from New York City on a plane ride. And we just got back about two hours ago. And um, we're tired of eating in the airport and we just wanted to make a really quick, easy, healthy dinner. Nelson's getting his phone hooked up so he's not paying attention to any of you because he wants to answer your questions as we're on Facebook Live and our Facebook manager is going to be Can we set this up here? That. Yeah, go ahead and set that up. I don't know so, how to do that. Can you? Um, uh, I already did. It's, it's, it's set up. Just hit the refresh button and you should be able to see it. So oh, there, there we, we are. Go. There we are. Yay. So I want to go over a little bit about what we're going to make tonight. Um, we're going to make barbecue jackfruit. Yay, everybody wants to know what jackfruit is, so we're going to have a jackfruit conversation. We're going to have coleslaw on top of the barbecue jackfruit. Um, and then we're going to have corn on the cob. Yay, I love corn on the cob. And we're going to have sweet potato fries that are going to take, they're, they're going to be baked. And they're not going to take too, too long. Ask questions as we go along the way. Um, all of the recipes that we're doing tonight are in the Plant Pure Nation cookbook, so we'll make it really easy for you. Um, but feel free to ask questions, and I'm going to go ahead and start. The first thing I'm going to do is cook the sweet potatoes because they're going to take the longest in the oven. So it's just Nelson and I, and I, I actually peel two sweet potatoes. You don't need to peel sweet potatoes if you wash them well, um, especially if they're organic. Um, so that's nice, and I'm going to do two of those. And I apologize, my eyes are really watering because I did something really stupid tonight. I cut a poblano pepper and took the seeds out. The seeds are really spicy. And then I rubbed my face with it. So I'm not upset, I'm not crying. I just have poblano pepper peas in my, or seeds in my eyes. So here we go. Nelson, can we switch places so yes. I can cut this? Okay. And then if you have questions, um, Feel free to, you know, type in those questions and we'll answer them as we go. Um, we got back from New York City. You want to tell a little bit about what we were doing in New York? Uh, we had a, a wonderful week this week. Uh, on um, Wednesday evening, uh, we had an event with the Long Island Pod Group and had a fantastic turnout. We had about 150 people who came. Uh, something like that, and we had a lineup of speakers, and uh, it was just a great evening and great to see all that passion. And then uh, the next day, last night, uh, we had our kickoff uh, event for Plant Pure Communities, which is a nonprofit organization that we have uh, set up to do some interesting things. As I mentioned at the meeting, at the event last night, uh, the foundation will be focusing on a number of initiatives. At the top of the list is a program called our Oasis, Oasis program. And we're going to be working with uh, some communities around the country to do pilot projects where we work with local partners to figure out how to get the message of plant-based nutrition and affordable food into lower income Community. So this is something that's near and dear to, to our hearts and was a main reason for the founding of the Plant Pure organization. So I just couldn't be happier. And we also are going to be launching something in 2017 that we've referred to in the past called the Truth Campaign. We haven't had an opportunity to focus on that. Really, it's just mostly been a bandwidth issue. But we do intend to launch that more fully in 2017 where we work with people to submit uh, legislation within state legislatures across the country uh, encouraging those legislatures to tell people the truth about health and then we also have some other few other things we're going to be doing we're going to be doing events around the country kind of like we did with the long island pod and we also have a scholarship program that you can learn more about as well to take my father's e cornell course and you can learn about that at uh, plantpeercommunities.org so it's just a fantastic week um, met some wonderful people, heard more amazing stories of healing like we always do when we have these yeah. events. Yeah. Just uh, great stories. Fantastic we'll, stories. We'll share a couple of them with you as we yeah. go along the way. 
I'm going to interrupt you because mm -hmm. I want to share with people how I make sweet potato fries. I get these gallon baggies and I put all the sweet potatoes in and, and then I add my seasonings and I shake it up really well. Do you remember shake and bake? Well, that's kind of what I do. I shake and bake sweet potato fries. We love sweet potato fries. And I'm making more than I would possibly eat tonight because Nelson and I are going to eat these for lunch tomorrow and possibly for dinner. Because when I cook, I tend to cook with the idea that we're going to get two or maybe three meals out of it. Um, he tends to eat a lot, so usually we just get two meals out of it. Well, um, I, eat, I eat a lot because the food's so good. But yeah. hey, we got a question that just came in here. What is your favorite kitchen tool? My food processor. It's really hard for me to say I like one better than the other because I love my Vitamix. But a food processor is a really nice tool to have for the majority of recipes. And if you can't afford a Vitamix, um, it's really hard to go without a food processor. And then my favorite tool is a really good knife and a knife sharpener because if all else fails, you can always cut. And I have this what, really weird... What about your dishwasher? Oh, that's right. My, my dishwasher. He's actually one of my, my favorite kitchen tools. <laughs> but I have this um, really weird uh, habit. I, I like to cut vegetables. So for people who buy pre-cut vegetables, that's wonderful. And they have so many pre-cut vegetables at the grocery store now. But I like to cut vegetables. And I don't mind cutting them and bagging them just like this and putting them in the refrigerator because so many vegetables are easy to do that with. Um, so really quickly, before I shake and bake, I want to go through what I'm putting in here. I'm going to put paprika. These are the Cajun sweet potato fries, which are in the Plant Pure Nation cookbook. And I'm going to put um, paprika in there. And it's a teaspoon of paprika. And you can use any kind. You can use the smoky kind or just the regular paprika. I happen to like smoky because I like that type of flavor. And then we're going to add black pepper, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And next in line, I want to be organized when I was doing this. Onion powder. I use a lot of onion powder. Um, I go through it quickly because it tends to add a really nice flavor, sort of a cheesy, savory flavor to things. And then we'll go to the thyme, half a teaspoon of thyme. And if, this is all in the Plant Pure Nation cookbook, um, so you don't. There's no surprises here. And then rosemary. A little half a teaspoon of rosemary and garlic. You can use fresh garlic out of the jar or you can chop it off. I'm not going to do that because I am so tired from all the traveling we've done today. So we're going to use half a teaspoon of garlic powder and then, okay, I admit I like my food spicy. So I'm going to use crushed red pepper or the other thing you can use is sriracha. We use sriracha like some people use ketchup in our house because I like spicy. I'll put a little bit of crushed red pepper, not a lot, just maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Um, and then you can salt it. You can salt it beforehand. You can salt it when it's done. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt in there, not a lot. You can always add later, but you can't take it out. So then zip it up and shake it around. And sometimes people get frustrated because it doesn't stick to the potatoes, so watch this. If you take a little bit of lime juice instead of oil and you put a little bit of lime juice in these sweet potatoes, it really makes it kind of rock and roll. So we're going to put a little bit of that in and it will help it to stick. It will help all those seasonings to stick to it and we can bake it. You don't even really need to do it all that much. And then um, I use parchment paper for my when I'm baking. Parchment paper, you don't have to use any oil. And guess what? You don't have to wash the pans nice and so. Um, I'm going to put this right on the parchment paper. And, and it's nice, the less you have, the closer they get together, they're going to kind of steam a little bit, so you want to kind of separate them and spread them out. Put them in the oven. It really depends on your oven, but I'd say 400 is a really good mark for this. Um, we're not in our house right now in this oven. For some reason, it takes a little more heat, so I have it at 425. So that's going to go ahead 
and, and cook and I would say it's going to cook for 20 to 30 minutes somewhere around there so it'll be done at the end of the meal. Do we have any more questions, Nelson? Uh, let me see here. Someone says, what's cooking? What's yeah. cooking? Barbecue jackfruit sandwiches. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to saute onions and peppers in a pot. I'm going to dry saute, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Let's get this pan as hot as, well, pretty hot. We're going to turn it up to medium to high. I'm not used to this particular. Okay, so there's another question that uh, just came in. Uh, someone wants to know what we are having for Thanksgiving. Oh, that's interesting. Um, pretty much everything that mainstream folks have, we're going to have stuffing, but I'm having a plant-based stuffing. We're going to have um, a corn casserole, which is plant-based. We'll have, remember that green bean casserole that your mother used to make with mushroom soup and onions. We're going to have that, but I'm going to make it plant-based and oil-free. We're going to have glazed carrots, stuffed mushrooms. We're going to have squash, mashed potatoes, mushroom gravy, and probably some cranberry sauce, but we're not going to have turkey. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about getting the tofurkey, but honestly, I don't really like those all that much, but, but one thing we, we were thinking about doing is doing some jacked up barbecue um, jackfruit ribs, which I'll talk to you a little bit about because tonight we're making jackfruit, barbecue jackfruit, jackfruit. So that's kind of a nice replacement for turkey. Um, and I think, I'm not going to promise, but I think we're going to go Facebook Live Thanksgiving morning and we'll share one of the recipes with you. Um, I wake my kids up early and I make them cook with me. And they actually really enjoy Thanksgiving because we spend hours cooking and having a lot of fun in the kitchen mm -hmm. and we eat in the afternoon. So I'm cutting up a poblano pepper and I'm going to put that in the fry pan. If you don't want hot peppers, take the mm -hmm. seeds out. There's a, I think there's another question that came in here. Um, what is my favorite kitchen tool? Um, That's a good question. That's a my, my favorite kitchen tool is the dishwasher because I always do the clean up and wash the dishes and it's nice not to have to do all those by hand. So, And also we're getting a little note here that the noise is pretty bad in the background. Like I think that's this? coming from this. So, yeah. so what we'll do is we'll cook on the stove and we'll unplug mm -hmm. this and we can talk while we're cooking on the stove. So sorry about that. Um, I really wanted to show you how to dry saute vegetables, but I can go back and forth with that and we can do it on the stove. Um, so I'm just putting a lot of vegetables in the jackfruit and I'm cutting it for you. Um, I didn't have time to prep things because we were busy traveling today. Um, but I have red peppers and I have um, poblano peppers and onions. You can really put anything you want in this. You can put celery, you can put cilantro, parsley, you know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, so let's just move this because okay. we're not going to use it. Just set it off to the side. Uh, no more questions? Um, I don't think we're having this one. But um, one thing I might talk about here a little bit is... Uh, uh, again, the the um, the passion that we saw last night at yeah. this kickoff event, it's um, it's really interesting. Uh, both at the at the end of the Long Island event, people came up and talked to us, and then again uh, last night. And what I find to be most striking is that people uh, seem to be very frustrated. Uh, you know, a, uh, somewhat apathetic, um, and sometimes bordering on, on depressed about the state of affairs and their seeming inability to, you know, contribute to positive change. And of course, I think a lot of this is related to the political uh, election that we, or the, the presidential election that we just all had to go through. But 
uh, you know, that's why, and I tell this to people, I, I, I mentioned this last night to some folks, that's why I'm so optimistic because I think that people today are so ripe for change. And in many ways, I think we live in a more revolutionary time today than maybe at any time since the founding of our country. And what we need is we need the right ideas to rally people and connect people. And, you know, I really believe, as I explained last night, that, it, that it's all about strategies for connecting and empowering communities and individuals to fix problems. Um, and, and there's a lot of ways we can do that. And, and that's why we're here in Southwest Florida, is to try to demonstrate um, a, a potential strategy to do that. But um, it's just kind of interesting to see that dynamic at work where people are, are so upset and, and somewhat depressed, uh, but also so hungry for, for real change. So I'm excited about what might be coming in the next few years. And, and I think Plant Pure is going to be a part of something really positive. So, I'm going to go back to the Yeah, food. go back to the food. <laughs> so, I'm dry sautéing. I wish I could show you, but... Okay, I will show you. So, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of caramelization on the bottom of the pan. You can see it's kind of brown. I put no oil, no water in this. Onions and peppers have a lot of water. So, what I want to do is I want to lift that the, um, I want to have to deglaze the pan and lift the sugars off the bottom of the pan. And it does it beautifully. I'm going to put it back on the stove really quickly. But as it gets brown, you're going to just put a little bit, like a tablespoon or two at a time, onto the onions and peppers. And it just lifts those sugars and coats everything. It makes the flavors just really dance. So you can dry saute with anything. Um, I mean, you can, the moisture you use can be anything. It can be water, it can be veg broth, it can be juice, it can be red wine. You know, if you're doing a marinara, that's a lovely addition. So, um, this probably isn't the best veg broth. Well, no, it is. It's, it's not low sodium. I usually get low sodium, but I've been a little, I'm learning my way around Cape Coral and what, where to go and where not to go. Okay, so, so, so someone here is asking um, if you can share your ingredients before we're done or maybe post it on the website or something. Can you direct, can we direct people to the recipe for this? <coughs> Excuse me. All of these recipes, you can see it deglazing off the pan. All of these recipes are in the Plant Pure Nation cookbook. Um, when I make barbecue jackfruit in the Plant Pure Nation cookbook, I put it all in the crock pot. Um, and I turn it on and I cook it for four to six hours and periodically I go in there and I sort of mash it up. But tonight, I'm out of, I, I wasn't home today so I can't put it in the crock pot. But you can use the same ingredient ratios for barbecue jackfruit and cook it over the stove. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Okay, someone wants to know what's wrong with using oil. And It's um, a good question. Yeah, it's, it's a question that we get a lot and of course I'm not a scientist, and I'm not a doctor, uh, neither is Kim, but what I can tell you is what my father says, and I've heard him say it uh, more times than I can remember. Um, the problem with oil is that it's a highly fractionated ingredient. So you're taking something from the food, and you're concentrating it at very high levels, and then you're ingesting it. And so it's, a, it's an unnatural thing to do. Uh, and your body uh, doesn't really know how to handle it and it causes all kinds of harmful effects. Um, a lot of people think that the, the studies that were done in the Mediterranean area justify the use of oil. Uh, it's something my dad talks about a lot. He knows the researchers who did that research. He studied the data very carefully. And as it turns out, those populations were had marginally better health outcomes because they were more plant-based, not because they were eating oil. And in fact, in other areas of the world who were eating more of a plant-based diet without oil, they had even better health, health outcomes. But of course, what happened is the oil industry ran with uh, that research and that data and kind of twisted it around 
to argue that olive oil and other kinds of oils are healthy. And they're really not. Anytime you take something out of the whole food, whether it's oil, a supplement, or even a drug, which is the most uh, extreme approach of all, uh, you're creating something that's unnatural and your body simply doesn't know how to handle it. It's foreign to your body. So. I actually think it's a cop-out because the food industry can use salt, oil, and sugar and they flavor your foods with, with those and add a few other spices, but <clears throat> there's so many other things that you can add to food to flavor it. Um, it takes a little more creativity. You have to think outside that, that box. But once you figure it out, you, you, you wonder, why did I ever use oil? Because there's so many other things to flavor food with. I have a bottle of oil that I like to use for cooking classes. For oh. Yeah, because it's a, really good, um, it's a really good teaching tool. So if you look here, one tablespoon, this is sesame oil, one tablespoon has um, 120 calories. You know how easy it is to put a tablespoon of oil into your stir fry? And there are literally <clears throat> no nutrients in this, zero nutrients. So you're not getting any fiber, there's no vitamins, there's no minerals, it's just calories. Um, so, so if you really know how to cook, you really don't need that oil bottle. All right, so we have about, about 10 minutes here. But, um, so another question came in, where do you buy jackfruit in southwest thing. Florida. So where do we, where do we buy that? It's a really jackfruit? good question. Um, I, I'm not quite sure yet, but I think the Asian markets are going to have jackfruit. They're going to have green jackfruit. Don't get ripe jackfruit. Get green jackfruit, and I get it from the can. If you want to buy it fresh, it's quite a project. It's the difference between a can of pumpkin and buying a pumpkin and cooking it fresh. It's that much work, maybe even a little bit more. Up in, uh, up in North Carolina, uh, we bought it at, at, at the local Asian market, Asian but also market. we were at, uh, I think it was Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, it seemed like the other day, and I saw it. Yeah. The, I think they're starting really? one. I, I yeah, I thought, I thought we saw it. They it, should. Well, oh, yeah. I know what you're thinking of. They actually um, have jackfruit, and they put it in a plastic bag, mm -hmm. and they season it. Um, it's expensive, and I heard it wasn't very good, but... This is a little different than green jackfruit. This is called young jackfruit, and I don't know if, if you can see it, but it comes apart really easily. You don't even hardly have to cook it. It almost looks like a meat. Um, but I'm gonna put this in here, and it, it takes, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. It takes on the flavor of whatever you're cooking it with. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put barbecue sauce in this tonight. And I know one of your questions are going to be, what barbecue sauce would you recommend? And it's not really that one. It's, it could be mm. better. But we're going to use that because that's okay. all we find it helpful. All right. Um, it's, it, it looks really good, though. It says there was sweet no, southern heat barbecue sauce. I love barbecue No sauce. high fructose corn syrup in it. Um, no oil. Minimal salt. But um, one, the one I would recommend is called Bone Sucking Sauce. And you can get that at Whole Foods, and it's it's pretty clean, and it tastes really good. I just, we don't live near Whole Foods right now, so I kind of have to make do. So someone here wants to know, uh, are there any oil alternatives? And first of all, a couple things to say, and, and Kim did a great video on this here recently, but you can uh, saute without oil. Uh, and she's got a, a video that we posted on the Facebook page showing how to do that. But also, um, there are all kinds of things that, that you can do with the natural fats in uh, nuts. And, and, and of course, soy, tofu, that's got some natural fats, sesame seeds, tahini. Um, but you can work some of those natural fats into your recipes to create, you know, creamier, kind of richer textures and flavors. And a moderate amount of nuts and seeds is actually essential to your diet. There's a lot of in, in misinformation out there now about nuts and seeds, and uh, this is something that my father has studied extensively, and he wrote a paper on this uh, that we published, I think called O, o Nuts or something. O Nuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you should take a look at it because uh, he, he's making his argument from a very holistic perspective with regard to, to nuts and seeds. And of course, you don't want to overdo it because um, nuts today come you know, shelled and, and in bags and it's, it's easy to overeat. 
nut seeds, and even avocados. So, so you don't want to overdo it, but you know, I always put a handful of walnuts on my, my oatmeal or cereal, cereal every day. I think it's really, really important according to, to, to my father. So, so can I interrupt yeah. you for a second? I want to show this to you. I don't know if you can see it really well, but it, it really has a, a meaty look to it and it takes on the flavor of whatever you put it in. Like you can, you can make tacos with this and put taco, make your own taco seasoning or you know, put some enchilada sauce in it, make your own enchilada sauce. But I'm gonna heat this up just slightly and we're gonna eat it like this. This is our barbecue filling. And then Nelson and I like, um, we like coleslaw on top of our barbecue sandwiches because this is a southern guy here and he likes that. So I, I wanna share with you the, this is the Plant Pure Nation tofu cashew mayonnaise. When we first started making this mayonnaise, it had a lot of nuts in it, so I'm gonna talk about that. It had tofu, it had nuts, and then it had vinegars, and some Dijon mustard, and some maple syrup, and we just kind of played around with lemon juice to see what we could come up with. And I kept reducing the cashews, trying to get them lower and lower and lower. And I was so proud because I got them all the way down to a quarter, an eighth of a cup, because I just got enough fat from the nuts to emulsify this whole thing. So this is one recipe of the Plant Pure Nation tofu cashew mayonnaise, and I'm gonna use it for the coleslaw, but it's nice because I make this in the beginning of the week and it lasts for a week. You can flavor it, you can put basil in it, whatever you want, but this is what we use for our sandwiches, if I'm making a potato salad or a coleslaw salad. So I'm gonna put this in here, and if you wanna use a little less of it, you can. I used about, I don't know, quarter of a cup. And then I like to add, and this isn't in the recipe, this is just me having fun. I love vinegar, so I'm going to put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there. And that would mean I will need less mayonnaise. And then I like Dijon mustard, so I'm going to add a little more of that, oops, a little more of that to it on top of the mayonnaise and just sort of toss it like that. This mayonnaise is so good, yeah. and um, one thing I want to try is is uh, BLT again. Mm -hmm. We went this this week. We went and stayed with a couple who are involved in the Plant Pure Community's uh, nonprofit, and um, they they were the 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 um, the woman that, uh, that that we stayed with there was an was really amazing, wonderful chef. I and yeah. she, she prepared some vegan bacon uh, that is not only really healthy, but actually was incredibly flavorful. So I'm like staying at a bed and I, breakfast on I wanna, I wanna try that with yes. the mayonnaise and, and the tomatoes. Yeah. So I, I, I have the sweet potato fries in the oven and they're cooking and I don't know how much longer they have. And then um, I, like, I like these sandwich thins because they're 100% whole wheat and I can get them in any grocery store. I'm sure you can find even better ones at maybe a natural food store. But again, I'm all about making this easy for people so they can do it quickly and enjoy it. So we use these. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put our barbecue jackfruit. And you know what I do when I buy jackfruit? Because you can't get it at a mainstream grocery store. I buy a case of it. And then and it lasts for a long time. You can just put it in your pantry and you'll have it. Um, so we're gonna put this on the sandwich. Oh, Nelson, can you hand me a spoon, a big spoon? Yeah. And then I'm gonna put the coleslaw on top of it. And then maybe a plate so I can put it on yep. top of the plate. Thank you. Um, and that's kind of how it looks in the cookbook. Hold it up to the camera so they can yeah, see it. Looks, looks like that. And we're going to put it on that. And then it's got, I'm going to serve it with the sweet potato fries. And I don't know what they look like. This, you know, this is so, so good. They're probably not done. Um, they're getting there. I, I would actually cook the sweet potatoes until they get a little crispy and maybe even blackened on the edges because that's how I like my sweet potato fries. And people always say, what do I snack on? What do I eat? Make a lot of these because you can stick them in the refrigerator and you can snack on them. You can put them in your salad, like croutons, cut them up even smaller. 
Um, you can have them for breakfast. They're great. So I'm going to put them back in the oven, though. Okay, someone is asking a question about what's in this bowl here. Uh, this is what was the, was made earlier. This is coleslaw. the coleslaw. And I cheated. I would love to tell you that I stood here and shredded up the cabbage and the carrots and the purple cabbage. But I just went out and got a bag, you know, those bags of uh, coleslaw. And then I put my Plant Pure Nation mayonnaise in it with some mustard and vinegar and just whipped it up. And, you know, the longer it sits in the refrigerator, the better it tastes. So um, I recommend you do that. And then we're going to have, so we're going to have French fries with this and corn on the cob. Super easy. So what's interesting about this is that, and, and this is the kind of style of food that we like to prepare for people. But it's, it's very much comfort food, but it's whole food. So you've got the cabbage, which is the, the coleslaw with some flavoring. Um, the, the flavoring is really the mayonnaise, which uh, again is, uh, Ooh, spicy. there's a lot of whole food in that with, with the <laughs> cashews and uh -huh. spices and flavorings. And then the jackfruit, which is a whole food, and that's flavored with some barbecue sauce. The bread, I guess, is the most processed part of this, but yeah. And then we've got the sweet potato fries and the corn. And the corn and the So corn. this is, you know, really over 90% of this is whole food. And it's just, it's, it's just as good as anything else that's barbecue. I mean, this is fantastic food. Um, and, you know, people say, oh, I, you know, I can't use all those ingredients. Nelson and I tend to use the same ingredients over and over. And you can actually cook these recipes because you've seen me do it enough that... I tend to use the same spices because that's what happens, you know, if you walk in someone's kitchen, you, you see their favorite spices. I get them all out. I get everything out before I cook because you can see that. This is not, I didn't do this for the camera. I did this because this is how I cook. That way you can assemble it and put it together. And yeah, you might have seven spices, but it really helps those flavors to move around and, and just, you don't need the oil. Um, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful thing and, and it's super easy to eat this way and find those recipes that you love. This happens to be um, a staple in our house. It's one of those recipes we make over and over and over. So, do we have any more questions? Um, <laughs> what brand of bread are you using? I'm That's using, a... this This one happens to be Arnold, and I did look at the ingredients. It's, it's just a sandwich thin, but I happen to like, if you were to ask me what brand of bread I like, um, what's that one? Oh, Killer Bread. Killer bread I love, and I almost got it tonight to make these sandwiches on and just toast it and put it on that, but I wanted to have more of a barbecue bun to show you, but we eat a lot of killer bread because that's pretty wholesome and pretty pure, and they have it at mainstream grocery stores as well. Um, so anyways, right. there you have it, and we're going to eat dinner. Do you have any more questions? Um, you're talking about Dave's killer bread. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, you Dave, forgot the Dave's. I'm sorry, Dave. I have to give him credit for that. Dave's killer bread. Um, also, we don't eat a ton of bread. I mean, we, we tend to mix up our grains at night. Like tonight, we're going to have bread. Um, but tomorrow night, we'll probably have potatoes. And we might have rice. We might have brown rice pasta because we like pasta. Um, we really mix up our grains. And I have explored. There's so many grains. There's barley and there's kamat and there's quinoa and there's um, farro there's so many different grains so try all of them and i have an instant pot so that makes my life a whole lot easier because i just throw the grains in the instant pot i cook them i batch cook them i make big batches i freeze grains so we eat a variety of grains um, and, and a lot of grains so i think we're um are we done with the food here? We are done with the food. Yeah, we so are hungry. <laughs> the, the last thing we'd like to say to all of you is to, to really have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we hope that you can spend that with family and friends. And uh, it's so, so important to, to, uh, to make time in your life for that. You know, and, can I can yeah. interrupt you? When, when, you know, a lot of you are going to go and eat Thanksgiving with people who are, you know, traditional eaters, and that's great um, because you have to remember why we're gathering together. Um, so kind of letting your guard down a little bit and not, not having so many rules, but trying to stay plant-based, bringing a really nice plant-based dish if you're going to someone's house, cooking a lot of plant-based dishes if they're coming, let them bring their food, and, you know, if they ask, fine, but I wouldn't make Thanksgiving a conversation about whole food plant-based and health because for, for a lot of families 
you know, that can cause some stress. So enjoy the day together. Yeah. And I would say, I know this sounds like a little bit of a cliche, um, you know, to, to really, this is a holiday and we should do this every day, not just a holiday, but to remember, you know, all the blessings that we have in our lives. And, you know, the world does seem pretty dark, but when you think about it, we have so much going for us. And this, this week, being in New York with the people on the Plant Pure Communities team and the people who came to our fundraiser and all the people that we spent time with this week, we, we just met the most amazing people. And, and it's just, it was actually hard to leave in a way to come back here because I just wanted to, I told Kim I wanted to get a bunch of tiny homes and maybe we could start a village. We could start our own tribe, right? <laughs> she's, 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 not, she's not crazy she's not crazy about a tiny home but but um but anyways uh there's just great people out there and and there's so much possibility that you know if you just watch the news every night you think the world's coming to an end but it's not. it's, it's not going to come to an end uh there's we're going to see some amazing things happening here over the next few years and it's because of amazing people and we just need to connect with each other and and uh, jo you know, join up join and make hands and get along. Yeah. And, and, so you know. yeah. So this this Thanksgiving, really think about you know the blessings in your life and and the opportunity that you have to to do good things. So that's well, it. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a great Thursday night and a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. All right. How'd that go? I think it went pretty well. Yes, I want your tribe. Thank you for doing this. Stop processed grains, he writes. What does Jeff look like? <clears throat> you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for taking time to show us this great recipe. What brand of bread? Ha ha true. They must be sad. They can't eat it now. Laugh out loud. Thank you. Great show. Hey, Whitney. Jeff, we're still on video. Oh, we're still on video. Someone yeah, says, why does someone keep sending sad we're, faces? We're still on video. Whitney says we're still on video. Oh, I did. I hit